How's it going, YouTube? It's your boy Tops and here coming at you with a deck profile today. Uh, today I'm bringing you back to just Melfi Sprite, uh, which is, uh, you know, something that I didn't really think we'd be going absolutely back to, but with the uh, procurement of some cards and with the, you know, with uh, some new uh, cool uh, Aqua stuff coming out, especially with some new Water stuff being released soon, uh, a lot of the stuff is actually really easy, easily. Uh, I don't want to say abusable in the sprite, but that does really help the deck a lot. Uh, to the point where it even won a South American WCQ. I think that was the tournament one. Uh, like just a, just a few days ago. And I really wanted to cover uh, a deck list that I was working on and testing before it popped. And then I uh, just wanted to talk about it a lot. Because sprite alongside uh, invoked are like my two favorite decks to play. And uh, yeah, so let's get right into it. Uh, so for the main deck, uh, we are very obviously going to have three Sprite Blue, uh, your bread and butter. We're going to have three Sprite Jet. Uh, I play two Sprite Red. I think two Red is absolutely mandatory. And one Sprite Carrot. Now, uh, some people like to cut the Sprite Red to one, um, and that's fine if they do so. Uh, I also do not play uh, the Pixies. I don't think Pixies is absolutely necessary unless you're go playing the hard go second build. Uh, I do play Gamma Burst in the main deck, but it's not necessarily because I want to go second. It just gives me the opportunity to go second. It also gives me a way to play through boards if uh, an OTK against stuff like Tenpai if I make them go first and they don't have something like Heat Wave to absolutely stop me from playing. Um, so yeah, uh, I do very much uh, enjoy just that lineup for the sprite monsters and then you have the three sprite starter we do play the one gamma burst and the one double cross in the main now i have been debating cutting one or both of these two cards and then playing um smashers in the main um mostly because like this is only really that great going first and this is only that great going second so you're playing a go first and a go second card when you could be playing smashers which Ultimately, at the end of the day, is a going first or second card because it lets you set up an interruption or it lets you uh, use stuff as board clear. Um, I think it's very much a little bit of uh, redundancy to play both of these, but at the same time, I think because we're playing over 40 cards, I think I'm at 41 currently. Um, we Our odds of seeing this aren't significantly lower, but it's one of the things of like uh, seeing this going first is, is okay. Seeing this going first is what you want. Seeing this going second is way better than the going first. And then seeing this going second can be honestly a brick depending on your hand. Um, but also with the amount of board, uh, board weight potentially that you have in this deck, it's already uh, pretty nice. Uh, for the other engines, we have the three Spot Frog. Uh, I absolutely love the fact that Spot Frog is being played again. I do miss Rotatonin. But at the same time, uh, you know, I, I love I love Swap Frog just because uh, I was I was around for like the start uh, the start of uh, Overdrive I think was the pack so like that that entire like uh, pack and all all those um, like the five the five Ds era Yu Gi Oh was some of my favorite Yu Gi Oh. Uh, and then for the small Ice Fairy package, we play the one Mirror Mage and the one uh, Freezing Chains. Um, this is essentially the combo to get to a one card toad. You summon Spot Frog, send Mirror Mage. Mirror Mage affecting Graveyard adds this. This revives Mirror Mage. Overlay these two for toad, and there's toad. Uh, we are also playing the Nimble package, so we are playing three Beaver and two Angler. I thought about upping Angler to three because we're playing Spot Frog, but I think in the same vein, if I was going to up Angler to three, I'd want to start playing like the adventure package and just playing the old and just playing similarly to the old adventure sprite lists. And while I think that's something that we very much could explore in the future, um, I don't think this is the build for it at the moment. Maybe it'll change soon, but uh, we'll see. And then for the Melfi package, we play the one caddy and the one piney. So just like the iceberry package, the Melfi package is extremely small on this as well. But it does add a lot of interruption because it does give you a floodgate, as well as it gives you uh, technically a monster negate and a way to interrupt boards. Uh, for uh, non-engine stuff, we do have two Cashier Fenrir, uh, sort of like power spell stuff. 
Um, so, uh, Fenrir is just really good in general. Uh, I've been starting to pay, play this more and more going forward, or uh, going forward with stuff. I think that Fenrir was really good, but it's even better now. And definitely, uh, I really like Fenrir. But two, I think, is really what you, uh, want. You could bump it to three, but I don't, I think it clogs a little bit at three. Uh, I do play the two Forbidden Droplet. I want to bump this to three, but I don't want to go to 42 cards. I don't really think that uh, playing the thir third droplet would help that with that. Um, and then I do play the two triple tactics and the one called by the grave. I think that uh, this is a pretty good spread. Uh, unfortunately, yes, there is the two, two, and two um, kind of methodology coming into play here. But uh, I think I think with right now with the way that sprite is, I think it fits really well with a forty-one card list. Uh, and then the last eight cards in the list are a hand trap. So we have three infinite permanence. I have three ash blossom and joy springs. And then I play two ghost ogre and snow rabbit. Now this is mostly for stuff like poisonous and tenpai where I can uh, hit their card, hit their decks in like specific spots to make them uh, less powerful. And then against certain decks um, like uh, ghost ogre can just be very, very good. Um, it it does it does interrupt a lot of things very well. Uh, Ash and Imperm are just like the two other best hand traps. I think if I was to, going to play another hand trap outside of these, I think the only one that I would pick right now is Droll and Lockbird, and that's just because of the way that Droll kind of works into the meta, and uh, also kind of uh, hits other sprite decks. So you'll always have like the super favorable matchup against the uh, against the mirror match. Um, I just didn't have a really good spot for it, and I wanted to play Ghost Ogres because of, like, Voices Voice and such. But I think if I wasn't playing Ghost Ogres, I could very easily just cut these, go up to 42, and play the Droll. Uh, even though I don't really want to go up to 42, it'd just be another way to do so. Uh, and not feel too guilty about it. So, let's get into the extra deck now. So, the, the extra deck is actually pretty straightforward as well. Uh, now with some of the changes, we don't have to play all the... With, with the change that I, I used to play live twin sprite um you know with with all the extra deck space open uh things have definitely changed and uh yeah so i still play the two gigantic i think two gigantic is absolutely necessary always it's just way better i do play the one sprint the sprint to send the angler uh and sometimes you can use it to send like mirror mage if you really need the extra boost if you have swap frog and this then you still get to do your whole combo even if uh, Swap Frog gets negated. Uh, one totally awesome because obviously you're able to play Toad again, and we absolutely love Toad. We have the one Melfi of the Forest and one Herald of the Arc Flight. Uh, this is the two extra deck stuff from your Melfi package. So uh, this lets you search your Melfi monster, and this lets you uh, negate. You can. This is a non-negate as well as a floodgate. So just really powerful stuff there. Uh, we do love Herald of the Arc <laughs> Uh, one Ninja Shadow. Uh, Mosquito is such a powerful card right now. Um, especially with Gamma Burst. Uh, and going second, depending on, like, the board that your opponent has. Uh, is the main reason why I don't tend to play Dark Roller. Uh, because the amount of, like, OTK potential through so many boards with this is so high. Uh, down one downer magician and one Zeus, uh, just to help clear more boards, and uh, it just really helps with a lot of the, um, a lot of the problems that the deck has with trying to out like massive boards, uh, and it's a non-destruction way to send everything, and then downer usually gives it the extra one send, so you uh, overlay downer then overlay Zeus, uh, you board wipe, and then you still usually have at least one extra board wipe. Uh, for passing back to your opponent. Uh, the one Mannequin Cat and one uh, Oni Bimaru uh, Soul Sweeper. Um, I love both of these. I think Oni Bimaru I might swap out for something. I don't, I'm don't. i not entirely sure. Um, I usually don't end up summoning him a lot of the time. Uh, Mannequin Cat has been an absolute gem though. And I absolutely love her. Especially with the side deck. Uh, one IP Masquerano, one SP Little Knight, and one Nightbird Phoenix, uh, and one Dark Charmer are the Link monsters in the last four cards in the extra deck. Now, 
Uh, Dark Tremor is something that I also thought about cutting as well as Obi Wan but I don't really know what to put into it. I, I was thinking something like Avermax or Nightmare Griffin because I have IP Mascarena, but IP usually just goes in the SP. And then when I want to make something big, um, I usually always want to make just Avermax because Avermax is so good at, into the way the meta is a lot. Um, depending on how the meta looks, uh, if you make IP into Avermax, usually the Avermax just can't be outed by a lot of decks. Uh, because a lot of decks, uh, when when they have monsters that are like unaffected or untargetable and stuff, um, and can be destroyed by card effects and they can't be targeted. Uh, usually they just have to attack over that, but uh, Avermax can't be attacked over uh, with special summon monsters. So, like Snake Eye doesn't really have a full way to out it because they also can't target it to put it into the back row. Uh, so like without Skill Drain, there is no real way to out it for them. Uh, and then for the extra deck, uh, or the extra, uh, the side deck. So the side deck is still a work in progress as well, but um, uh, this is just something that I've been using for local stuff. And uh, yeah, so we'll just go real quick, just really quick. Uh, so evenly matched, uh, board wipe, love it. Uh, three dimensional barrier, uh, you know, really helps you against tenpai, helps you against a lot of stuff. Um, also you can set it if you get dusted, you can use it. I play two uh, Cosmic Cyclone. I find that it's really good in the Labyrinth, uh, especially with stuff that comes in back from the graveyard. Being able to hit the big welcome, uh, even if it does resolve, is really nice. I play the two Lightning Storm for more back removal as well as monster removal. It's just a way to help clear out a lot of things, especially with Snake Eye and Labyrinth and different things, uh, and more so now also like Ritual Beasts. Uh, this this is going to be pretty good. Um, and then we have the one change of heart is the last Speller Trap in the side deck that I've been playing. Uh, I've been really liking change of heart. Um, I really like Snatch Steel as well. Uh, so I was debating just playing Snatch Steel. But I've had too many times where I've activated Snatch Steel. And then just the Pirelli card resolves. <laughs> And um and then uh when I don't play a snatch steel, nobody's playing Pirelli, which is like this weird oxymoron. Um so when I do play so uh, I just been playing Change of Heart instead and it's been working out okay. Uh and the last four cards are different targets for mannequin cat. So we have Chaos Hunter for the D Shifter, we have Gendo, uh which is technically also for D Shifter, um, but specifically into uh play wonderies. Uh, one more fifth Goliath. This really helps against Tenpai, uh, as well as uh, Earth Machine technically because it's Earth. And then one Arc Lord Christia. This really helps against Voices Voice uh, branded if they put a light on the field beforehand, uh, and helps a lot with that. So um, there isn't too much to help into uh, into Snake Eye except for Goliath technically can can work. Uh, but that's about it, unfortunately. But to be fair, we uh at the moment, um, I Snake Eye just is too, <laughs> Snake Eye has too much to uh for stuff anyway, so it's just kind of the problem to begin with. Um, but anyway, yeah, that was the deck profile. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please leave a like. Uh, if you want to get cool deck boxes like this or this, uh, feel free to check the link in the description for Gem Tech. Uh, they you can use the discount code on screen. Uh here uh it'll save you 10 percent off and then if you have any questions for me or any uh or just want to hang out in a cool discord server uh i have a discord link right over here with the dancing pearly um or this isn't a link but it says invite in the description it'll be in the description below um and probably a pop-up somewhere on the end screen so anyway yeah thank you guys so much for watching i hope you all have a great day god bless and peace